All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. Go ahead and check me out on anthonysmoke.com. As always, if you learned something, go ahead, hit that like button, leave a comment, and make sure you ring the bell so you get a notification when I drop a new video. And I just recently joined Instagram, so you can follow me on the gram at Anthony Smoke Data. So today, uh, we're back in Excel using SQL Server. And so this is a continuation of my previous video, passing parameter values from Excel to SQL Server. And so this is what we built in that last video. So if you recall, you know, I've got a state, Georgia, I can pick a, an order begin date and an order end date, and we wanna refresh this report. So when I click the button, you'll see um, we're passing in a SQL query here, right? We just kind of pasted this in here. We're using parameter values. It's smart enough to pick up the, uh, the values from the cells, Georgia, you can see the 114 and the 120 here. It's smart enough to do that. But at the end of the day, we're passing in SQL code here and this can be manipulated, you know, so some malicious actor can put in a, you know, delete uh, from, a, from a database table and we don't want that. This is great for quick and easy, you know, being efficient, on your own desktop, you know, quick and easy. This is great. So if I run this, right, we have less records, 114 to 120. We don't have any 120, but you see it refreshed. And so I'm gonna show you a little bit different way to do this in this video. Let's bring up this recent version that I put together. Same concept, and this is what I'm gonna show you in this video. So I've got Georgia uh, 11 to 131. Let's go ahead and refresh. And you'll see the difference here is I'm calling a stored procedure. So this is a much cleaner way within this stored procedure uh, that I'll show you in SQL Server. We use the SP execute SQL command with parameters. And so that's just a cleaner way of protecting yourself from a SQL injection attack. And just to confirm that this does work, I changed this to New York uh, in the date. So if I hit refresh, you'll see it's gonna execute. It's got New York, it's got the dates. I hit run and I've got New York in here. So this method does work. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to uh, SQL Server. Let me bring this uh, into the view. And so we're just gonna set up a stored procedure here. And so there are two ways to do it. And so this is one way. So this isn't the way that I'm gonna set it up, but this is one way to do it, right? Um, you create the procedure and the, you know, you define your uh, parameters that are, that are coming in uh, for the procedure. Uh, I set no count on, cause I don't wanna see that one row affected uh, message. Um, every time this is run. And then you just input your, your query, your select query here. And I'm using Wide World Importers DW. I'll leave a link to that uh, if you wanna link to this data. And so in here, you'll note that um, for my state, state province equal to the order state that I defined here. Let me see if I could uh, make that a little smaller here, get it all in here. You'll see order state, order state here, and my order date key greater than equal to this parameter, which I defined here, and less than equal to this parameter, which I defined here. So you're just gonna take out your values that were hard-coded and replace them with the, uh, the parameters that you define up here. And so this is how you would call this stored procedure once it's created. So if I were to execute this, you'll see that it does indeed run. So this is one way to set up your stored procedure. Now, the way I recommend is this manner right here. We're gonna create the procedure, uh, same deal here. You got order state, order start date, order end date. And the difference here, because we're using uh, SP execute SQL, what we're gonna do is we're going to put our SQL string um, as a, uh, as a value for this dimension right here. We declared SQL string as a varchar thousand, and I wanna set that equal to the actual SQL string here, but I have it uh, between tick marks, and the end just means Unicode, and I have a video on creating dynamic SQL where I get a little bit into SP execute SQL and the benefits of that, check that video out. But in here, uh, again, same deal, I've got my order start date, order end date, and the, uh, the order state, uh, and I close that out with tick marks. So now 
uh, I'm using the SP execute SQL command. What's what I like about the SP execute SQL again, um, you know, you're clearly delineating what is the SQL string as opposed to what are the values, right? So, you know, when you tell your database, hey, this is a SQL string and these are the parameters that are coming in, uh, it helps the database um, fight off the SQL injection. So if I'm a malicious actor, uh, I, can, I can manipulate my inputs to fool the database uh, to make it do things that, uh, that weren't necessarily intended. But if the database can determine what is the SQL string and what are clearly the parameters, then it's very hard to do a SQL injection uh, attack, pardon. So that's why I'm using this SP execute SQL. And there are some other benefits as well with respect to the query plan that make it a little bit more efficient. But anyway, um, and this is how I would call this. I call it SP sample order report underscore alt for alternate way. And this also works if I execute this because I've already created it. You see, I've got values returned. So two ways to do your stored procedure. We're going to use this, um, this second way, this alternate way. But I just wanted to show you that we can create this stored procedure in SQL Server. And now we're going to call this from inside Excel. Okay, we are back in Excel, and from this point on, it's very similar to what we did in the first video. Make sure you have the Developer tab. You know, you're going to right-click if you don't have it, customize the ribbon, and add it. And I want to make sure um, that I hit Record Macro right here. Yep, so we'll call it Macro, uh, we'll call it Macro S SP for SP Execute SQL. That's fine. So it's going to record what I'm doing. And we'll go into um, the data here. I'm going to get data from a database from SQL Server. And it's going to ask for the server name, which I will provide. All right. And it's going to ask for the database name. So that is the Wide World Importers DW, which comes from uh, Microsoft. And if I go into Advanced Options, instead of pasting in um, the SQL query, we're going to paste in a call to that um, stored procedure that's that we set up. So within this execute, uh, this regular kind of execute uh, stored procedure, we have the SP execute SQL in there. But regardless, we're just going to paste this here. We're going to hard code values for now. It's OK. We're going to change them so they refer to the cells. But for now, it's OK to leave that in there. I'm going to say OK. And then that's good. This is what the data should look like. And let's go ahead and load that to an existing sheet. And I like C8. That is fine. Click OK. And we have data that comes in here. I'm going to go back here into my developer. Sorry. And let's go ahead and stop recording. Right. So that stops new code from being um, developed here or generated by Excel. So let's go ahead and rename this. I just like to rename this uh, to, if it'll let me here, rename this to sales order query. All right, and let's go into our visual basic. And I'm going to look for uh, the name of my sheet was stored procedure refresh example. That's fine in the modules. And you see the macro SP. Uh, it generated this code when we made a connection to SQL Server. And the only thing I care about, if you remember the last video, the only thing I care about is this line. And you'll see it's much shorter because we're not putting in um, uh, all of that SQL. It's really just that call to the stored procedure. So this is what we care about here. So what I'm going to do, just like before, I'm going to paste in kind of my starting um, code here. And so I've created a subroutine. We're going to subtest underscore SP because we're using the SP execute SQL. You can call it whatever you want. But same as before, I dimensioned some variables. And this is how the values from the sheet uh, get into these variables here. Sheets, sheet one, range D3, that's the cell. So D3, D4, and D5 should be the values on my sheet. And so what I'm going to do, again, active workbook.queries.formula, I want to copy the formula from the connection here. So I'm going to, I have this commented out because I don't want anything crazy to happen. And so I don't care about the formula equal. I care about this line right here. I'm going to copy all of that 
Oops. And we're going to place it right here. And nothing will happen because it's, it's a comment. And what I'm looking for, um, we're going to replace, there we go. So instead of Georgia, we had uh, order state. So I'm going to just put that here, close that off, and replace Georgia with order state. I believe I got, what did I call it? Uh, yeah, order state, order start date, and order end date. So coming back here, order state. We're going to do a little surgery here, and the same thing for the next two. All right, so we've set that up. Um, again, I'm going to double check again. Order state, order start date, order end date. And let's see if this ends up working for us. Okay, so here we are back on the main worksheet. Let's go to the developer tab. Let's go to insert a button here. And let's go ahead and draw it out. And I want to give it my subtest uh, SP. That's what we called our uh, macro for this that calls the uh, SP execute SQL. And then I can kind of rename this here. Um, refresh report. And um, if I run this, let's see what happens if we did this uh, correctly. So I'm going to click this. You see, we've got this pop up. It's pulling in Georgia. That's good. 1-1-2015 one, one, and 1-1-30. One, one, if I run it, there we go. It did refresh. And so just to make sure, let's change this to, let's change this to Nevada. Shout out to Las Vegas, right? Let's go ahead and refresh this. Yes, it takes in Nevada, takes in my two dates. And we change to Nevada. Wonderful. And so the only other thing I'm going to show you here on the properties, uh, whoops, not here, in the, in the table, table design, properties, go ahead and uncheck this adjust column width. So now when I adjust this, this will stay. It won't change. So if I change this, uh, New Jersey, shout out to Jersey, change that, it's gonna run. And this stays the same. It doesn't uh, shorten up like before and it works. So I would say go back and watch my first video. I talk a little bit about some things that you could protect this even more. But the main benefit here is we're using that stored procedure instead of pasting in raw SQL that can be manipulated. So it's a little bit more uh, secure. It's a lot more secure, I should say. So this is the better way to go about it if you have to distribute this, uh, this sheet to someone. So um, this has been Anthony Smoke. If you learned something, go ahead, hit that like button, leave a comment, and super thanks, always appreciated. As always, get out there, do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.